know what we do with this? We place it right here in front of the screen. If you've ever pitched before, you've probably come across some rather odd techniques and theories when it comes to training command. We've got great alignment. For decades, the path to actually getting better at command has been unclear at best. It feels like coaches have tried just about everything. Endless repetitions of drills, obsessing over optimal mechanics, even throwing with your eyes closed. That's outstanding. Here's the thing. Nobody really knows if their techniques or any techniques of the last century have actually worked because we haven't been able to measure what makes a pitcher's command good. That is, until now. Wait, what do you mean we can't measure what good command is? Isn't it just how good you are at throwing the ball where you want it? Well, yes, but proving that has been remarkably difficult. Traditional statistics like walk rates or strike percentages have historically been used to help identify which pitchers have good command, but they only tell us part of the story. Take Blake Snell, for example. In 2023, he walked almost 100 batters in 180 innings pitched, giving him the second worst walk rate among pitchers with at least 100 innings. So he's got bad command, right? Nope, he actually won the Cy Young Award that season. How is this possible? He is not the greatest command pitcher in the world, but he gets a horrible rep relative to how good he actually is at commanding a baseball. Blake Snell takes an approach where he is almost never throwing the ball down the middle. His rate of throwing the ball in the heart of the plate is extremely low relative to MLB average. He is going to walk you before he gives you the opportunity to catch a ball in the middle of the plate and do damage with it. So that's where these traditional metrics like walk percentage or in-zone percentage come up short in truly gauging how good these guys are. This gets at a fundamental problem in baseball when it comes to command. We've been measuring outcomes and not intent. A pitcher might get a swing and miss on a pitch that was way off their intended target, but it still counts as a positive result in terms of strike percentage and walk rate. To really measure command, we need to know not only where the ball was thrown, but where the pitcher intended to throw it. Without that, we're left making educated guesses. Strike call two and one. But to hear, you know, get a and that's exactly what a company called Inside Edge decided to do, make really good educated guesses. Inside Edge charts over 1,000 games every year using computers and technology. The pitch charts from these games are turned into comprehensive scouting reports that utilize colors and graphics to make them easy to read and understand. The founders of the company started this with charting by hand, basically, and by paper. We have now moved to a web-based app called Eclipse, looking at every pitch, putting a location, collating it, and then sending it out to teams. They manually watch each pitch and infer where they believe the intended target was. But that has its challenges. Our job as charters is to decipher what the catcher is doing. Are they being ambiguous with where they're setting up? Are they kind of being believable? We have to think of what the pitcher wants to do, pitch by pitch, depending on count, and then go from there. This data by no means is perfect. Uh, anyone who watches a baseball game knows it's not always the easiest to pick, figure out where the, uh, the ball was being thrown, but over the course of the season, this becomes very reliable data. So at Driveline, we summarize this data into execution reports where we're looking at your miss distance distribution, seeing if you tend to miss in certain locations, if you're missing arm side and up or glove side and down. We can apply that to our knowledge of a hitter's heat map of where his hot zones are, where his cold zones are, to give you a recommendation on where you should aim your pitch. This information has allowed us to gain a better understanding of what is considered good command at the major league level. So I think it would surprise a lot of people to find out that the average miss distance is around 12 and a half inches at the MLB level. Something under six to eight inches is a really well executed pitch. When you get up to around the 18 inch miss or higher, that pitch is basically uncompetitive. If you have good stuff, you may be able to get away with 12 to 15 inches on average being a decent pitch. But if you don't have good stuff, guys like uh, Trevor Williams, who don't top the stuff leaderboards or Kyle Hendricks, they're able to execute consistently under a 10-inch miss, really allowing them to play beyond their stuff value. These insights have already started to influence players and team strategy in the major leagues. But the question still remains, how do we train command? Enter 
The Intended Zones Tracker. Using a projector, a two-scale strike zone is displayed behind home plate. Before each pitch, either you or someone else marks the intended zone and pitch type using a touchscreen. As you throw, the intended zones tracker pairs with TrackMan's radar technology to identify the pitch's movement, spin, velocity, and exact location. For the first time, we have a clear measurement between the intention and result. With driveline, what we're trying to do is we're trying to quantify basically everything that we can. And anytime you want to train a skill, a great place to start is by quantifying it, by measuring it. Training velocity, you start with a radar gun. And then from there, we dig into what makes velocity. For us, this is really step one in training command. We have to measure it precisely and accurately first. What it is that is going into command, what it is that we can train to improve command. We can start to tie biomechanics to command. Remember those old school training methods we talked about earlier? Well, now we can actually test them. By combining the data from the Intended Zones Tracker with Driveline's Biomechanics Motion Capture Lab, we'll finally be able to answer questions like, what effect does one's balance or mechanics have on command? When it comes to training command, the tracker can also be used as a tool to help influence the training environment. Now we're measuring exactly how far the pitch missed by. And we can see that on a pitch by pitch basis, we can see that um, within grouped within pitches, those measurements just allow us to really see if we're actually improving. And when every single time that you are on the mound, you're actually being measured and incentivized to execute your pitches, like that definitely brings a heightened level of focus to training. We're soon gonna be able to run simulated games where you can set in a lineup and it'll pop up a heat map for the individual hitter you're facing based on the count. So you can look at this heat map live and really internalize exactly where you need to be executing your pitches. And every time a pitch is thrown, we can then simulate what's gonna happen. Maybe instead of 30 pitches, we decide we're gonna pitch two innings against the Yankees today. We're entering an era of baseball where the art of command is meeting science. Each pitch is now a data point. Each miss, a lesson. Our methods might be as strange to future generations as throwing with your eyes closed is to us. But this time, every attempt brings us closer to the answer.